Hello friends, my name is Kyle, Real Revelations Everywhere. In this video, we're going to talk about proactivity in your mindset and how to practice like you play and injecting proactivity into the way that you go about not just practice, but the way that you think about the game that affects the way that you practice, the way that you internalize what you have practiced, and how you translate practicing better, gearing it towards all of the little things that you do to intentionally practice what you are meaning to get better at more efficiently and just really really more intentionally just being more intentional about practicing how you play is the key is part of a proactive mindset is understanding everything that you do is you practicing the way that you do something when you're really intentional about what you are doing and the way that you're going about it, you don't leave any leaves or stones unturned. Like everything gets turned over. Every word, you just reevaluate the way that you have used words in the past. Reevaluate, literally just look up the definition of things straight up. If you don't know what a word means, no one's going to call you dumb for Googling the definition. <laughs> like, I don't know. And if they are calling you dumb, like, that's a sign from that person right there. There's joshing, and then there's, like, genuinely bullying. Someone's bullying you for trying to learn more. That's insane. And obviously, that gets filed into the trash can. But being extremely intentional will only serve you better obviously we've gone over that part but in terms of practicing things it's still the same mindset and when you are proactive about the way that you practice things you are also in turn practicing proactivity and what i mean by that is Really, 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 really being very, very, very intentional about just getting away from just being a pedestrian. Get away from just someone that is just around. You like that, that's not useful to just be some random observer 24 seven. That's like really detrimental for your mindset, for your growth as a person, for just everyone around you to just be a pedestrian, just wandering around in traffic, just a permanent liability to do with everything. Like, you can't be trusted with anything. You can't, you're innately irresponsible just by the virtue of that mindset. So, 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 so unuseful. Just everything about it is unuseful. And it's just something that you slip into. It's easy when everything is done for you, when you don't feel the need to accomplish anything on a daily basis. We aren't required to survive like that anymore. So what do we require from ourselves anymore? It's like, in my mind, in the exact same way, or it's not the exact same way, two sides of the same coin, 
being someone that is proactive isn't always a good thing necessarily it's not rather it's not always used the right way by people when they do it well obviously crime is a pretty proactive thing but you know where that gets you for the most part but being a mentally proactive person that is ready to help other people that's like the other side of the coin in my mind of like what it is to slip into being a shitty person that's just overly comfortable and just has the need for instant gratification and just generally doesn't actually accomplish anything or you know anything real at any point just laying around getting dragged around by their car whatever you know situation they're in there's it's a dime a dozen being not just a non-proactive person but just allowing everything to happen around you and not actually wondering why anything is actually occurring directly combating that with a proactive mindset is so important in my mind to not just being like absolutely overrun with bullshit you have to be proactive to protect yourself from all of the bullshit you have to be proactive to just generally fend off the avalanche of i'm gonna say stupidity these issues are not born of stupidity. They are uh, unfortunately quite well crafted to prey on your weaknesses. But you have to be able to recognize that that is what is occurring. That marketing and all of this stuff, this is one part of it, has gone overboard into the domain of absolutely brainwashing tactics and techniques. Like, Combating stuff like that requires proactivity. Being the best version of yourself requires proactivity. Practicing all of the things properly and doing things really well requires proactivity. There's no getting away from it. You don't get to lay around and someone kicks your door down and offers you fame and fortune and you were just the child of destiny with the fucking you know, whatever falls out of the sky and gives you your ultimate, that shit doesn't fucking, you gotta go get it. That, I don't know how many times I've said that, but I've said that enough. So how do we do that? How do we go be proactive? How do we gain proactivity? Practice is obvious. How do we practice it? And how do we in turn become more proactive from our practice. We practice proactivity. When we start, obviously, it's going to be difficult because we're going from nowhere. We're not fucking just pumping 50 pounders in one arm by being proactive. We're not just going out and just, I am proactive now, brick wall, meat fist. End of story. Obviously, we're going to work our way up to the brick wall. You aren't born with a sledgehammer in your hand. I don't care who you are. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. And also, even if you think you are, you fucking surely you don't know how to swing it. It's not how it works. So we start from somewhere. We start from scratch. Or not. You could be a very proactive person already. You just didn't really have any aim necessarily. I don't say aim, but like a sense of true direction worth following is a lot better way to put that. How do we practice from scratch? Step one. Find something you enjoy. What are you naturally drawn to? Is it a competitive thing? 
doesn't really matter. Does it help in a sense? I guess you could say, but it it's not required. It really is just passion. Do you really enjoy it enough to practice it in the first place? You gotta be honest with yourself. Why are you doing what you're doing? What does it get you? What does it earn you? A whole lot of fun? That's a great reason. You know, does it afford you a sense of confidence that that mastery of whatever you want to do is going to translate into a bunch of other things that will help you in the future? That's a great reason. Is it to make people think that you're cool and to try and force people to recognize how awesome you are and that you are the most whatever I whatever you've come up with. You're the biggest and the strongest or whatever. I don't know. You the the fastest and the funniest. Is it to convince other people that you are someone? It really doesn't matter what you're trying to convince people. That's a shitty reason. You're trying to convince other people of something. Not good enough. What are you trying to convince yourself of? First things first. What are you earning for yourself? Are you practicing something that you know is going to make you a better person? Skills that translate. Like, why are you doing it? That really is the basis of it. Because that's what's going to help you continue. When you are having a really bad day, you need that consistency. Why are you doing it? Do you have that answer in your pocket? 24 7 do you have something to lean on that is going to get you back up off the ground immediately and a lot of people don't you're not the only one if you said no it's not a detraction from who you are but realizing why you're practicing and knowing that to be the truth is extremely important in the efficacy of your practice. If you don't care about what you're practicing, your practice is going to be shitty. You're not going to fucking think about it properly. You're not going to be proactive. You're not actually going to get anything done. You're still just wasting your time. No reason to do that. What do you want to do? Why do you want to practice what you're doing? Figure that out first. Because if you don't have that, the practice isn't going to last. Nothing is going to come of it. And it's going to be practice that you can't fall back on. So just make sure you're not wasting your time is the essence of that little nugget. Why are you doing it? Figure that out. Whatever that answer is, I hope it's not for other people. If it's you doing it for yourself, that's two thumbs up. If it's you trying to prove a bunch of shit to other people and that you're um, they just whatever excuses, excuses, excuses. Yeah, Will wasn't clever enough to come up with something on the spot there, but that's all it is is fucking excuses. Get rid of that. You gotta know why. So now, whoa, look at this. You are someone that knows why they're practicing and what they're doing it for, and it's for a great reason. Now what? What do we do? How do I... I gotta be proactive. What am I gonna do to become the person that is proactive? Well, let's break it down. First things first. If you are a proactive person, chances are you're trying to affect something, right? Proactivity, you are active, you are doing something. Chances are something is changing. So what is that? What's changing? In a sense, 
you are deep down that's always what it is and that's where we center ourselves you are changing what are you changing about yourself is it physical is it mental is it emotional chances are there's a little bit of all three in there there always is but what are you directly affecting are you practicing a sport decent amount of that is for sure obviously physical but emotionally are you getting anything out of the way that you feel mentally are you processing what you are doing in a constructive way that's the basis of all of this stuff what are you doing why are you doing it identify it so you have basketball team on X day. If you're committed to being on the best basketball team that you can possibly find yourself on, is basketball day the only day that you think about basketball? I hope not. You don't seem very committed. I'm going to say that right now. Basketball day is not the only day for basketball. The day before that, basketball. The day before that one, basketball. The day before that one, probably has something to do with basketball. The day before that, basketball. Is that next day? That was that best. That was that the next basketball day before basketball. Guess what? The day before that one, before last basketball day, basketball. And believe it or not, the next day before that, well, maybe you didn't do basketball that day, but probably basketball. Crazy, right? You don't just pick and choose single days. Like, weave that, whatever that is for you, weave it into the fabric of your mindset it's not something that you just turn on and off that is just sometimes well okay today's basketball day so we're gonna play some basketball and then one day oh my god you just became mj no obviously not so when you think about well what do i like to do when it comes naturally you think about it all the time now do you think about it all the time or not? That's how we circle back around to point number one. Is that something that happens naturally? Is it all that you think about all the time? Because it is for other people. That's something to understand. And that's not a detraction necessarily, but it's just an underlying understanding of the level of passion that you are bringing to what you are doing. You just really enjoy sports in general, and this is just the sport that you're playing right now. Obviously, I'm not saying you aren't having fun. Obviously, not saying you aren't getting better for it. It's all useful if you make it useful. But if you commit your entire life to playing basketball, and you don't like basketball, you're not going to be the best basketball player you could have ever been. You're not going to be the best version of the person that you could have been becoming this entire time who you actually wanted to be is someone that doesn't actually care about basketball and isn't going to practice that all day. It's not going to translate properly. It's not going to feel natural. And that feeling is something to identify. It's not a bad thing. It's, you might not think it's a good thing, but lying to yourself about it is only going to become a bad thing. It is going to force that thing, whatever it is that you are lying to yourself about, to resemble something bad to you. Over time, it's just going to rot away in the back of your mind. That shit has no place in there. It really, it doesn't. There's no room for any bad, rotting garbage fucking festering in the corner. Get rid of that shit. 
It's done. Really, it's keeping things in line with the direction that you want to face and being honest with yourself. A lot of people are going to be in a lot of situations where they don't feel like they can tell everybody what they want to do in their passions and how the, they feel about the direction of their life and all of that stuff. It's going to be hard, but at least internally, there's no lying. Like that fucking sickening feeling in your stomach, that fucking pit. You feel like your whole body is being sucked inward. It's disgusting. Lying to yourself. I haven't said it enough times already. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep saying it. It's a no-go. It's a no-go. Especially about this shit. When it is your passion, when it is something that you are dedicating your time to practicing, when it is something that you are proactive about, you are not only just putting yourself in uncomfortable situations but you are investing so much energy that isn't going towards other stuff you're putting yourself out there and you're making yourself vulnerable you are dedicating energy that would have gone to protecting yourself to exposing yourself and making yourself uncomfortable and when you do that without good reasoning and good intention you're just hurting yourself can't do that anymore in case I haven't said that enough, I'm going to keep saying it. You do not need to hurt yourself. You do not need to hold yourself back. There's going to be plenty of shit in life to do that for you. Don't do it to yourself. No need. Don't waste your time spending it fucking practicing a bunch of shit that you don't care about. And it's, well, you know. I had to do it because of this or that. Not blaming you for surviving, but the moment you understand that you are holding the reins and that you have the ability to do what you need to do for yourself, you gotta fucking rip that shit back. No more doing it for everyone else. No more doing it just to satisfy other people. You have to be your own person, and if those people genuinely care about you, they will understand that you gotta do what you gotta do. It's that simple. It may not feel like it, but it really, really is. If these people aren't on your team, their opinions don't matter as much. Not to say there's nothing that you can't learn from a few mean words. But that's not going to dominate your psyche when you understand I'm doing what I need to do for myself so that I can get better. If they don't want that for you, that says more than I need to hear as far as I'm concerned. But those are decisions for you to make. I don't necessarily know that you are alluding to what I'm alluding to. But I'm going to leave that up for your interpretation because it's your situation. You need to decide and critically think about what's best for yourself. Other people don't understand how you feel about it. There's only so much that you can say. And there's only so much you can do to translate how you feel to other people through the medium of words and ideas that we work with. You can show people. That's a way better way to do it, but it's going to take a lot of time, and that's not really at the step that we're at yet. That's a little bit further down the line. We're still on step. We're like point seven. <laughs> still uh, contained well within the first few baby steps of this very, very long proactive journey. 